Good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Sarlows. I'm Kelly. Good morning, I'm Karen. We are on, I don't know what set, we've lost the number that we've <laughs> changed sets. If you're watching on YouTube, you're noticing a totally different background. Um, we have had so many audio difficulties, Karen. It's incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, fortunately, we have a great team uh, to set us back up and troubleshoot. So uh, this will be an ever-evolving set as well. Everyone send love. <laughs> That we don't need to move again. (laughs) Send love and tell us what you think of the set. Yes, we've got some good ideas for the background, but that'll be a ways down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, we are happy to be back uh, in the month of December bringing you coffee with the Sarlos. Um, We'll do our show notes as usual to keep Mm -hmm. some kind of stability in our lives that we can count on. Um, So as you know, uh, our Evening with Medium events have all been cancelled for the 2020 year. Um, That session would have taken Mm -hmm. place on December 4th. Um, That was kind of our last our last hope, but that's okay. Um, you know, that's mm-hmm. for the safety of everyone involved, and we were content to make that decision and mm-hmm. cancel so that we can keep our community safe. Um, we will keep you all posted about potential 2021 dates. Um, we ha- don't have news on that yet, so uh, we just wanted you to know we're not holding anything back. We're just kind of feeling things out as the laws keep changing for COVID. But thank you to everyone for your enthusiasm and support this year um, in wanting to attend those events. We appreciate that. We have a second podcast series called Sips of Sanity. Those are 10 to 15 minute shows. They run in a group of five. The very first show always airs for free on YouTube and the website by sarlo.com. The remaining four shows are always available each month on patreon.com backslash by Sarlo. The reason we develop those is for a spiritual and intuitive um, and emotional toolkit for your intelligence. So Kelly and I try and find tons of tools to give you in all three of those areas, and we put them all in one spot for you. Those air the very first week of every single month. Yes. So um, in exciting news, we are launching a book club on Patreon starting in January. So if you are interested in joining, you can email us at info at bysarlo.com. We can answer any of your questions that you might have. Um, We've let the public know as well that we're starting with Who Moved My Cheese. Uh, We're letting you know in advance in case you want to buy the physical book. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of you will be doing that by audio, um, audible, pardon me. Mm -hmm. But any way that you want to do it, um, that is something that's just going to be one more tool in your toolkit for emotional intelligence, which is super exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, Go ahead. We do private sessions for people all over the world. Um, We do it by Zoom, Skype, FaceTime, WhatsApp, Theralink, and telephone. The sessions are just as accurate as if you're here in person or if you're in the same city, the same country. It doesn't matter. Wherever you are in the world, get cozy, book your appointment, and sit in and have a session with either Kelly or I. And to do that, go to the website by sarlo.com. You can fill out our request form, and one of us will get back to you to book your session. Well done. Very professional. You're just you're getting cleaner and cleaner, hitting it's all the points. Just a good day. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Expect nothing tomorrow. (laughs) Okay. Um, And last but not least, too, we have gift certificates available. Um, Christmas is coming, so if you are looking to gift anything to uh, your loved ones and your friends, you can purchase those via distance. We can provide e-certificates for you at any denomination that you'd like. If you're local and you'd like to pick up something tangible, we can do that for you as well. The e-certificates are printable in PDF format if that's something that's important to you. Um, And like Karen mentioned, those sessions can be done anywhere in the world. Um, So you don't need to worry about setting aside lots of time or travel money anymore uh, if you want to experience that. Good. Mm -hmm. All right, Karen, let's do it. Okay. I have a gentleman and you get to name him. Oh, I should have been prepared. Okay. Um, Jesse. Is that Grace? Yeah. Okay. I'm just thinking of the bingo sheets. Yes. That's an actor on Grace that plays... Jackson. <laughs> oh, so they get to use their real names if they know them and the names on the show? Yeah. Oh, so they get double. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm like working hard for you guys and for my own personal entertainment. <laughs> okay. So this is Jesse. Um, Jesse uh, did his session visually. So I can't remember if it was Zoom or WhatsApp or FaceTime, but anyway, we could see each other. And I 
I put him, I want to say late 30s ish, like around there, maybe early 40s. And um, he said that at the very beginning of the session, he says, I, I've seen your show. I've seen the podcast show. He says, um, my partner watches it and I've heard it in the background. And like I've, you know, sometimes I sit and I watch it for a minute or two with them. So I know, you know, from watching it that people can ask about what their soul contracts are. I don't totally understand it. He says, but from listening to some of the shows, I just, I feel like you're just going to give me information if I say soul contract. So there was a little bit of knowledge, not a lot, some openness to it. Um, and he just said, can you just tell me what you get if I just say that? That was actually very well done. Yeah. So that's how he started it. And I took my pen and paper and the spirit guide said, just write a bunch of things down on the page from us. And I went, oh, okay. So I wrote I wrote on a piece of paper. I think it was things like um, uh, his he that he wanted to know what the soul contract was for himself. Um, and he referred to it as his partner. And they said, well, there are two. But he doesn't think you're going to know that. So he, he he's nervous because he knows you could. Mm -hmm. He just doesn't know if you will. So we want you to write down um, that he's married and that he wants to know the, the contract with his wife. Okay. They said, put down child on the page, but we're not too certain if that's actually going to come up about what the contract is, but he does have a child and that will just be a validation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's also a relationship that's going to be affected by all of this. So Technically, it, it, it could be reasonable. And they said, put down career, put down his job. And I said, oh, he is working. Some people make an assumption. And I don't think anyone's making an assumption right now. Oh, so true with COVID. Um, so I wrote down job and that he wanted to know his sole contract about his, his job. And then they said, well, he's been having an affair for a very long time. Put that down on the page too. And I went, Okay. So they said, check in with him and just ask him if this is what he's interested in to kind of see if, if, you know, you can give him those validations because there's two in there for him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, more than that, actually, all of them are because I don't know anything about him, but he makes some assumptions about psychics. He thinks that there are certain things that everybody is, like everybody's married, everybody has a kid, everybody has a job. Ugh. And it's like, well... Some no. of us don't want those things. Yeah. <laughs> and some people are single, like mm -hmm. by choice or otherwise. Like anyway, I think though that it's good for people to hear that because some people out there listening might go, yep, that would have been me making that kind of an assumption, right? Because mm -hmm. that's my situation and my friend group. Right. Right? Um so I said, well, I'm just going to read you the list first as to what the guides say you're actually interested in, and um, we'll see how it goes from there. So I read the list about all of those things, and w when I got to the point about, um, and that you are also asking for the sole contract in an affair, and I said to him, you know, this is a long-term relationship. This is not short-term. He goes, he just looks at me stone-faced. And it, it's just literally like, even, even Kelly to the point where the eyes won't now blink. He just kind of, mm -hmm. and his, he makes sure that his facial muscles around the, um, his, like a smile stay very neutral mm -hmm. so that it's almost a grimace and the guides go, and there it is. And I'm like, they're what is? And they're like, look at that face. And so I'm just looking at him intently as he's looking at me. <laughs> but I'm looking at him because the guides are like, no, take a really good look at that face. Like, okay. And they're, and I said, well, what am I looking at this look for? Because that's the look he gives people when he's caught. That's what he does. He freezes. He gives the empty eye, like, 
And he looks right in your eyes to see, like, does she know? And he stares right into your pupil to yeah, see. Yeah, I'm not enjoying this. Oh, it's nasty. And he he won't smile or frown. He won't speak. He goes into silence. He's a withholder. He's going to avoid. He's having a freaking meltdown, mm. but he doesn't want anybody to know. He does this at work. He does this with his child. He does this with both of his partners. And he he puts them... He puts himself into a freeze, but in that is all kinds of verbal abuse. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't know that it's called verbal abuse. He just wants to block them from being able to read his emotions because he knows with all of these, all of these people that he's triggering them. So if he's quiet long enough. How, how, sorry. How do you have a concept of... I don't know that that's verbal abuse, but I know I'm triggering you. Well, you just wouldn't know the term. Right. It just would be the term. And if somebody said to him, if a therapist said you abuse your wife or your child, he would say, no. That's my point. Oh, yeah. Like, but, but I know I trigger her. It, yeah, exactly. On purpose. Oh, yes. Well, it's all what we call a clusterfuck, right? I'm going to so, call it some other things soon. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So he, he does this to me and they're like, okay, can you address the look right now? And I'm like, holy shit, I've got one or two things out of my mouth and it's like, go at them. <laughs> so I thought, well, put on my big girl panties and give it a shot for you. Thank you universe for giving me this opportunity um, on his behalf mm -hmm. or on your behalf to make him aware of this. So I went, oh, I said, I see you, you're giving me the look. And as soon as I say this, there's a moment where he changes his look. So his shoulders drop. He gives me a little smile. He blinks. Wow. Thank you very much, sir. He blinks, drops his shoulders. And so I said to him, okay, Jess, you just dropped your shoulders and blinked. And I said, and I'm recognizing from what the spirit guides are saying is that your um, loosening up a little bit because you're a little anxious to see how much I'm going to know. You want me to. It's like you want to be called out on everything, but you don't. Mm -hmm. Because this is what you've been doing for decades. And it's 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 your pattern in jobs. It's like it's everywhere, but you're at a crisis point. So I said, um, the guides want me to make sure that I bring it to your attention that this is what you do to freeze people out. And he goes, what does freeze people out mean? And I said, um, it means have complete control and uh, over emotions, but that over your own so that they can't read anything about you. You become like a statue and it infuriates them. So they go into their, you're doing it again. And they do their best to try and get an emotion out of you, a response out of you. And this becomes a game. And I said, but in reality, what it is, is your game is all about abusing people. And I said, so you want to know about relationships. And then I hear the guides go, okay, stop talking. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I stop talking and they go write something else down on the page. So I just dropped my head and I started writing and he stayed quiet because that's what he likes to do. So it worked out fine for me. And the guide said, please write down on the page under wife, move on. Under job, move on. Under affair, move on. Under home, time to sell. And so I literally wrote down exactly what they said under several of the things that he was interested in knowing what his contract was or like what his future was with it, what his past was, all of those things. And I, they said, read it to him again and show it to him. So I took the sheet up and I showed it to him and he's, you could see he's trying to read it. And I said, I'll read it to you as well. And I said, they're saying, you know, it's time for the house to sell. It's time to move on and away from your wife to move on in your job, to move on um, in the affair. And he goes, that's what a soul contract is? And I said, yes. Yours. I said, it is. I said, it is yours, yes. 
And he goes, what do you mean? He says, could you just, you know, can you explain a bit more? And I, I, so I, I said to the guides, like, what do you want me to do with this? And they said, well, we, we want him to know that because he makes no effort to connect to either of these two women, that it is in the sole contract for him to do the leaving now, that it's time to put an end to abusing these people. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, Karen, it's time to put an end to the abuse. Um, it's time for him to be on his own. And I, and I said, what about the job? What do you want me to say? And they said, well, we're telling him to move on um, before he's fired. And I'm like, okay, do I say it? And they said, you can tell him it's time to move on first. Don't tell him he's going to get fired. Let's see where this goes and if he's willing. But as far as we're concerned, you're, gonna, you're going to end up having to tell him that a firing is coming. This is not going to shock him because of his behavior. I think it's really cool. I just want to point out for a second, because it might go over people's heads if they're shocked by the content um, and how, because, you know, people are trying to put, picture themselves in these positions. They might be lost in, oh my God, what would I be feeling and what would I be doing? Mm -hmm. But I wanted to take a moment to illustrate what you just actually explained in terms of the gifts um, that, you know, we don't filter unless... A human says, I'm not comfortable with certain information. Please mm -hmm. don't offer it to me if it comes up. Or if the guides say, don't say this. Yeah. And I think that's really neat because, you know, that just goes to illustrate how much we are really not involved in mm. the process. <laughs> um, you know, as much as you're literally a channel, it has nothing to do with you. So it's mm -hmm. not, I'm going to give him a shock value later if I don't feel he's paying attention to me or respecting me. Like it just, Karen doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Karen won't remember, you know, it's not about you. It's simply, they're saying, we'll see where it goes and then we'll judge if it's safe to divulge that information. Mm -hmm. I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. I do too. And, and I do find, Kelly, that I often do say to clients in sessions, oh, personally, as Karen Sarlo, I don't care. Yeah, I'm not your girlfriend. Yeah, I, I'm not your therapist. I'm not your partner. I'm not your friend group. Um, I'm just telling you it factually from your own spirit group. And you do with it whatever you want. You ask whatever questions you want, dismiss whatever you want, Um you know, take take the advice mm -hmm. and take what the spirit guides are saying is coming and be proactive or not. It's personally not up to me to say it or to care whether you listen or don't listen mm -hmm. and how you respond. And I think that's really important for people to hear because people who follow us know that clients will write up complaints about our behavior. Mm -hmm. They will write up, well, didn't you care? Remember the girl that attacked you? Attacked you? Mm -hmm. Didn't you care? Didn't you see my tears? Didn't you? Remember, she, want, she just wanted to bash you. And it's like, no, 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 we're channeling, honey. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to cry. Lots of our cl clients cry. If we cried or if we stopped and ended sessions mm -hmm. every time somebody was upset, we we would have we, we would be barely working. Yeah, and, and there's there's check ins to say you know do you need a moment with those tears? Yes. Have I crossed a line? Is that what these tears yes. are about? Or may I continue? Yes. That's different. Yeah. That's right. So I mean, there. That's why we create the protocols, as you said, mm -hmm. of doing check ins with every single client. That's without exception. I, I wanted to illustrate the other side too, and then I'll let you get back to your story, is mm. that it's it's not even about what you just said, but also so that people can hear, wow, there's no judgment because mm -hmm. it's not their advice. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I can't come back if I don't follow their advice. Yes. It's the guides channeled something for you. Karen and Kelly don't, I mean, we care about you as humans in the sense that we hope things work out for you, mm -hmm. but we're not attached to your outcome and we're not at attached to your process. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's great. And why people end up here is because they can hear that there is no judgment, no mm -hmm. attachment, that we can simply be someone who facilitates an opportunity mm -hmm. and then they get to move on with their life mm -hmm. in any way they choose. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just wanted no, to point that's out awesome. Thank the, you. the filters and what those look like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm, I'm supposed to leave. And, and you could just hear like, what? And the guide said, um, Karen, he, he doesn't, he doesn't want to let go of anything. Yeah, we got that. 
And they said, we, you need to help him or, or uh, word it in such a way that this is about learning to let go of things. And because he doesn't want to let go, I said, well, wait, wait, what doesn't he want to let go of? And the guides went, he doesn't want to let go of the fact that both of these women meet his needs. He bounces from one to the other. And I thought, wow, okay, so he can withhold and then go to the other one and they'll meet his needs. So if I withhold connecting to my wife, I can go to my affair and have sex. I'm not really giving her anything other than sex. There's no intimacy. Am I really giving her anything either? Right. I'm performing sex for my own satisfaction, but I'm not really meeting her needs. Mm -hmm. There's no deep intimacy. There's no connection. And so long as she's fine with that, and she is, she's been taking it for years, though she would say she's not because she's been complaining the whole time. And he goes, say that again? And I said, well, I said, she complains that you're not present, but in actuality, as much as both women are complainers, that's what they do. They tell you what's wrong. They want to fix things. They actually stay and tolerate it. Mm -hmm. And I said, so he goes, well, what do you know about my affair? And he's just testing at this point. And so the guy said, well, he's been having the affair as long as he's been married. Oh. Yeah. And I said, well, did it start before the marriage? And they said, yes, he had both girlfriends and proposed to one and married her and kept the other one as the affair. Can I clarify? Yeah. Did they know about each other? Oh, I don't know. Because I wouldn't make these faces yeah, I if there was communication. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, um, well, passing a judgment here. I, Kelly, I'm going to say... Base, mm, can we continue yeah. and maybe it will Your present answer can itself? be, I don't know. Yeah, I can't recall, but it might come out just in the notes that I've written for the show. I don't remember that. Um, part, part of the contract is that he wants two people because they, he thinks two, he needs two people to meet his needs. But he doesn't think in any way that he's not meeting either one's needs. So I said, so... You're comfortable having as two people meet yours. Have you considered that your wife would be having an affair to have two people meet her needs and your affair would need two men to meet her needs? And the crack, the foundation was not there. He did not. <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. So I'm not too certain about that answer. That's why I was like, I'm not certain what this answer is. I'll go this with gets, no. Yeah, this gets really uncomfortable for him. Um, he he doesn't he doesn't go down that road. So I said to him, Oh, and the guides go, he has no empathy. And I I know, I know, I, I know you get that, but I need to say it for the people that are listening. Some understand that already, yeah. and they're like, oh, for God's sakes, he doesn't feel for anybody, he doesn't have empathy, he can't even, you know, look at Karen directly with any emotions. I know there will be listeners who totally get this from the get-go, mm -hmm. and I think that there will be other listeners that just are married or are the affair who will, really will not know, and they're waiting for us to say everything. Oh, yes. They're waiting for us to say the word empathy, and then they're waiting for what the definition of it is, or they've got their phones on the couch beside them, grabbing it, looking up the definition and going, what is empathy? Mm -hmm. What doesn't he have? Because I'm, this is why I'm not happy. What is it again? Empathy, the ability to connect to another person, mm -hmm. the ability to connect to nature, the ability to connect to the world, the ability to, to connect. see past yourself. You got it. To pets, anything, right? So, like this, this is a this ends up being quite a complicated session because he's not all that interested in getting a lot of emotional intelligence. He's interested in knowing the facts. So he goes to questions like, "Well, if I leave." Um, uh, will my wife move on and, and get married? Like he just wants factual things. 
He's not, will she be hurt? He, um, does she love me? There are no... There are Intelligent no, questions. None. None. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. And, and I found his session very interesting for me because the guides were like, no, no, we're not going to explain about any emotions here. He doesn't want to go into them in any way. He does, and, and I'm thinking, there's a child. We don't even get to the child in the session mm-hmm. other than the fact that it's used as an affirmation. His entire session is based around the fact that because he doesn't want to feel anything for himself or that he wants to control what he feels is another thing. Sometimes he doesn't want to feel certain things. And at other times he wants full control over what he feels. But he also wants full control over what these two women feel. And that's what drives him to go back and forth. If he can't control, then he needs to go to the other person. Enter COVID-19. So I asked the guides, well, what does that mean? And then COVID hit. Like, how does that impact him? And they said, well, um, his wife wants him to isolate at home. Oh, right. (laughs) Oh, the affairs and isolation. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. And he wants to say that he's going out. He needs to say things like, after work, I'm going to pick up, I'm running errands, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, which was when he was going to his, um, I don't know, do you want to name her? I don't, sure. I don't want to be disrespectful. No, this, these are two people. Mm-hmm. So why don't you name his wife? Um, Chantal. And his affair. Stephanie. Stephanie. So Chantelle wants him to be at home. She wants him to be responsible. She wants him to be, and I mean, she wants him to be safe, but mm-hmm. she also is looking for, I need help. Mm-hmm. We're working in our, and now he's working in the home. So he doesn't have any reasons to go out and say, I'm, I have to leave work early. It's my morning to pick up coffee for everybody on staff. Really meaning I'm going to, Stephanie's house for an hour. So (laughs) COVID has thrown a wrench into his routines. That was so kindly put. Yes, I'm I'm just trying to be neutral. Mm -hmm. And Stephanie, who understands that he's married and Mm -hmm. knows all of this stuff... Well, at first when she when the COVID hit, she was trying to be, okay, I understand. And he was like, oh, you know, I have to do this. I have to do that. I can't come over. I can't. And she was trying to be understanding. And now that they are many months in, she has lost all patience with the I'm second. Um, you can only come here when it's convenient and your wife isn't being what she refers to as demanding which is just rude. Oh, it's a farce. She's the wife is not being demanding. She's just being in her life. She's just dealing with reality. Mm-hmm. But and here it comes. So when this is explained to him to give him validations of this is what you're living. This is what the guides are saying the soul contract is now. It is to leave both of these women. It's not to choose one, which is part of why he's called is to see, is this going to come out that I'm supposed to leave my wife? Am I supposed to be with the woman I've been having an affair with who is he thinks is my true love? Well, his true love, because he doesn't have to deal with his daily, mm-hmm. daily life and daily bullshit. So, like, she's the one that gets the best of sometimes, or so he thinks. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. What a love story. And so he thinks. And in, and in reality, she's now sitting down realizing how very little he is meeting her needs. COVID is pointing out how little anyone is meeting another person's needs, let alone our own. Yes. And really, how much did this bubble just illustrate that when you have sex with one person, you're having sex with everyone? Yes. Yes. (laughs) So the, there's, there are conversations here where his guides bring this out and it just, I want to say it kind of dawns on him. Well, if I leave both women, are they both going to move on and find other partners? Irrelevant. 
And that's what he's told. None of your business. Not, n- not, your, not your concern. Your concern was to create a healthy reality. And he went, pardon? I guess so. <laughs> and his pardon was like, are you, are you kidding me talking to me like that? Oh. Like. Okay. It, oh, yeah. I thought you meant like pardon, like what is that? No. It was the, what you and I have come to call the Facebook client. Right. <laughs> Where they want to go on Facebook afterwards and say how rude we were and how, yeah. oh, they just want to spew it all of their anger. And and their anger at their situation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we know what the anger show is all about. It's... Yeah, I always wonder, like, when that's happening, you know, when they're sitting at the keyboard, like, okay, what part of the story am I going to leave out so I still look good, right? Like, they've (laughs) got to say, okay, I'm not going to tell the public when I complain about Kelly and Karen that I'm having an affair, so what part can I write? (laughs) Like, she told me I don't live in my reality. Ooh, that sounds good, right? Yeah, she attacked me personally. For not meeting my partner's, no, backspace on the S, partner's apostrophe needs. (laughs) And it's like, what the... (laughs) Yeah, it, it's it, you. You illustrated that really well. I do. I would really do want to continue. This really goes places. So he says when he says to me, "Pardon me," I wait for the guides to respond because I don't know mm-hmm. what his "pardon me" means. I'm not certain in all of his confoundedness where he's at. Mm-hmm. And they said he just doesn't understand about the word reality. Oh, that's what I said. Yeah. And uh, we want you to explain that he is constantly shifting his own reality to what are my needs in this moment. Okay. So for anyone hovering over our bingo squares, we're just going to let you put your little chip down on Dr. Romani. Yes. And any reference to narcissism or Nina Brown. Or Sam, Dr. Sam Vaknin. We don't have that on the bingo square yet. Oh, let's still refer to him. He's um, he's really like the father of narcissism in the sense of Nina, Nina Brown is the mother of narcissism. Sam does a lot of work as a psychiatrist in that background. And I do like to point out a male and a female because some people want to go more to learning from Nina, female, and Sam, male. Um and that's the, that's just people's preferences, not mine. I think they both do a great job of educating. Of hmm. educating. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to get like well, hopefully I haven't forgotten. He asks questions about his reality and what do you mean, and the guides really have to pull out really specific, um, slow analogies and examples for him to help him understand that. It's his reality that matters to him and not either one of these two women, let alone that there's a child here. That, that the, and that the child is really on his peripheral mm-hmm. to the point where the wife feels like a single mother. Mm-hmm. And his wife is a single mother because mm-hmm. he really is not present to nurture, raise, set boundaries, communicate. model, communicate. He's really not present. Physically, he can be present. He can take out the garbage on Thursday morning. Like, you know what I mean? Like, (laughs) I know, low bar. Is he really taking the garbage out? (laughs) No, he's just taking the food garbage out. He's not taking out the other garbage. So there's this huge question here and a huge part of our session where the conversation really comes down to what reality means and what it means to actually know yourself. Mm-hmm. And I know our patrons are going to go, oh, that that was the sips of sanity for November. Mm-hmm. Yes. And it's based on clients like this that prompted me to sit there and think of doing a series like that mm-hmm. because I couldn't get it all done within a one-hour session for, for Jesse based on all of the other information that was coming through. And I do realize that there are other places to get this information as well, but how you and I like putting that together and saying, here are short little 10-minute little bursts where you can learn to know who you are. Mm-hmm. 
So he thinks he knows who he is because I he, bet. <laughs> bet he knows himself real well. But when it really comes down to what do you really know about yourself, like about your job, like he's, oh, I'm fine. And I said, no, you're not fine, Jesse. You've been in it for about 10 years. So he's got seniority. And I said, and out it popped right out of my mouth. Um, thankfully for the guides that just let things fly. And I said, no, I said, as a teacher, I said, you don't connect to your students. He's a teacher. And he thinks because he has curriculum in front of him and because he's doing methodical things and he likes sports, so he likes the idea of I'm a basketball coach, you dribble, you do this, you put it in the basket, you high five, you give them shit when you need to. It, like it's all very methodical for him. So he likes the teaching, and I'm not going to say that this is a good teacher. I don't want anybody listening to attack us and say, you didn't even describe a good teacher. No, we did not. No, we did not. We don't have a good example on the show right now. <laughs> That's correct. We're totally agreeing that this is not a good professional. He's confronted here that even though he's unionized, and he banks on the fact that this union is going to keep him his job till he retires. But the spirit guides come in and say, you are not meeting anybody's needs. Mm -hmm. You are not modeling for your students what a healthy male is, what a healthy human is, mm -hmm. what a healthy adult is, and so on. So he's like, well, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not quitting my job. The guides want, and I said, well, it doesn't really matter then. And he goes, what? I said, well, I said, you continue on. He goes, are you telling me? Are you telling me something? And he's agitated. And I said, well, I said, the guides don't want me to go too far into your future. And he goes, okay, fine. And he he's okay with that. and because yeah, he doesn't have to take responsibility for it. Not yet. And I said, I'm going to move you along to something that is in your soul contract here. So moving on is in your soul contract with two relationships. He goes, so you're telling me I'm supposed to leave my affair and leave my wife. And before he can get the words out of his mouth, and this was really good timing, I'm going to tell you, the spirit guides come in and say, he's going to say he's religious. He's going to say he's Catholic. He's going to say he can't. He goes to church. He, His school board watches his attendance at church. He's, uh, and so on and so on. He's, he's towing the line, he thinks. And then he slides the affair, which maybe the church might say is fine or isn't fine. I don't really know because I'm not part of that religion, but, but I might, yeah, well, let's not go there. I don't know what they'd say about it anymore. He's just thinking, so long as they don't know that about me, I'm a good Catholic. I put my money into the um, thingy. <laughs> Yeah, you've recovered really well. You don't even know what it's called anymore. I don't. Good for you. It was a big day, people. <laughs> Into the basket. Um, like, and he signs his name so they know the amount because that's got to be registered at his school board that he's paying that amount, that he's showing up on those Sundays. They know how many Sundays he's attending. They know what he's paying out of his salary. They know how much he makes. So he's being monitored. And he... He thinks that because that he's passing being monitored, that he's okay. And he really believes that he's okay. Instead of what really is your reality? That you are unethical. Yeah. I wanted to, be, to really choose my words here. That you are... Abusive. Abusive to that community. You are abusive to both women. You are abusive to your child. You are abusive to your coworkers. You are abusive to the students that you teach. And Kelly, it like sadly, he really struggles to see this because so far as he's concerned, he's doing what that religion wants him to do. He's of service. He's married. He's got kid a child. He thinks that what he's doing is ticking everything off on his list. So there is deep, deep confusion in him. And I, this is so very confusing because you can see that because he is so 
raised and so ingrained in some of those systems that he really truly cannot understand that this isn't okay. Now, does he know that he shouldn't be having an affair? Yeah, but he doesn't think that's that big of a deal because you can be forgiven. The church will forgive, right? Not women, but... Well, him, he's a man. So he thinks that's okay. So they're like, and I mean, he's young. I know people might think, man, is this dude like in his 60s? Like, what is he, 90? Like, this sounds like people, of, I'm going to say, because I'm almost 60, of my generation that have done all that mm-hmm. and thought, oh, yeah, when I die, uh, forgiveness. It's all good. Remember? He died first. I thought that's what you guys were so afraid of, though, that there wasn't maybe potentially really forgiveness with that whole middle ground and hell. It just depends on what spin you want to put on it. Right. So it like there are different spins. There are the people that are hunkered down and scared shitless and would never have the affair because of it. Then there are the people that are doing it that are still religious but just thinking, eh, he died for my sins. I'm good to go. I can do any sins I want. They're all going to be forgiven. And then you've got people that, no, if I pay the church for my stuff, I'll get in. Huh. Okay. I, I'm, I'm making my payments. I show up at church on Sundays. I'm covering my ass. Like there are the ass covers too. Mm-hmm. So you, you see where there's a, a great deal of confusion in all of this and how very much he's not trying to be rude to me or mean. He's just literally still looking very straight-faced, but very, like, I don't understand this. Okay. So today's day one. Yes. And I realized in speaking to Jesse how much I had to slow down, Mm -hmm. how much I wasn't able to say, and here's a bunch of tools, and I'm going to send you this, and would you like, and, and go over and, you know, just... See Doctor, watch Dr. Romney's stuff. That might even be, well, he still think he needs to do all that stuff, but the, the, we really have to slow it down to baby steps. And, and it also really taught me that there are people your age that are still ingrained in the very same stuff, my generation and my parent, my mother's 93, mm-hmm. all that are still in, like right from 93 to 59 to 33. Yeah, because trauma is passed down. You got it. And depression is a trauma on the body. And the depression is often passed down generationally because of what did or did not happen in the home. Mm -hmm. We didn't even get to that conversation that he's depressed. Mm -hmm. We couldn't even get down that road yet because it was just to talk to him about the fact that there are possibilities, that there are healthier realities. Well, and, and, and if you come back to what the actual intention was, as he laid it out, it was contracts and he's learning that the contract was to walk away. Yes. And that he doesn't want to walk away because he doesn't believe that he can make change. Mm. I, I want to just really spell it out for listeners mm-hmm. too, because, uh, you know, to say let go is very much a cliche. Um So let's Mm. break down what this actually means for him. And it's a tremendous amount of action to dismantle a marriage and a home, to dismantle an affair, which is a very intertwined relationship. And as we're hearing, it was for as long as his marriage was. Mm -hmm. This isn't just let go and be over things emotionally. This is actually a process of, as I mentioned, dismantling things. Yes. Yes. And a career, as it sounds. Yes. That I, as far as I can tell from what the spirit guides are saying, um, this is going to collide for him. Yeah, well, and I mean, it has to at some point, mm-hmm. right? And if it doesn't with the women in terms of his, who he's chosen as, I don't even want to say partners, um, but it's going to at some point when the kid grows up and has enough self-awareness or enough anger, either or, whichever end of the spectrum, to start challenging that relationship mm-hmm. and where dad is mm-hmm. or isn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or in a disciplinary meeting with a principal that says, yeah, time's up. Yes. And I do know from what the guides were saying that his disciplinary meeting with the with his superiors, a principal, whatever, um, is coming quickly. Mm-hmm. There, there's a, there have been lots of complaints. Um, 
We didn't go into it in great detail. The guide simply put it down on his page uh, that uh, his career was coming to an end. All of it was move on. And the house, I, what was written by the house, beside the house was time to sell. Mm -hmm. And that he, he, then he asked too, he said, well, what about time frames? That was important. Excuse me. I just remembered that. He goes, what about the time frames here? And the time frame for, I think it was sell the house and leave his wife, um, came before leave his affair. Hmm. The, 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 his affair, Stephanie has been waiting for him to leave his wife. Now she's married. So she's, um, she's, she's been waiting for him to leave his wife so she can leave her husband. That's common. Yeah. This, this is, this is very common that people want to, be codependent and go from one codependency to the next codependency. They can't stand the thought of being healthy for a single day. So they have to be able to go from one codependent relationship straight into the other. Oh my God, get a dog. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good idea. Um, get a TV, get a hobby. Never thought I'd hear that come out of your mouth. Well, I think one of our bingo squares is Karen Bash's television. <laughs> well, well, I do for the most part, but I mean, it would hurt less people if he watched TV than if he just continued to yeah. perpetuate this mm -hmm. because he doesn't think that he's hurting his students by having an affair and being dishonest to his wife and his partner, both partners. I don't know how to keep wording these two women and, and, you know, I'm trying to be very respectful to every single person here. They all matter and yeah. they all need to get healthy. These are three people that are codependent. These are, and, and her husband, so we might as well say four, that are all codependent here mm -hmm. and all need better tools and all need to actually sit in their reality. If for one moment, Jesse's wife actually faced her reality, she wouldn't be staying. And it's because he goes into his freezes and then keeps hitting her triggers and they keep hitting a pattern that the two of them stay stuck in running the same movie over and over again every day. And then he doesn't like that movie or he's played that reel. He's done it. He knows it. And he's, he's played the reel, the, that TV show. Then he goes over to the girlfriends or calls her or meets her someplace and they run their wheel. It's a little bit different, but it's not much different than the one he's running with his wife. Yeah. It's a little bit different. He thinks he's got more happiness there because they have less time together. When in reality, they just have less time to fight. And less responsibility. You to got fight it. over. <laughs> yeah. Just less thing. Yeah. Less things to fight over. So, and he doesn't have a child with her. Right. Where he has to discuss the, as I said, reality. Mm-hmm. Okay, so where are we going with this? Well, that he asked he at the end of the session he says, "Well, so what do you mean then? Like, what are the what are the contracts? Like, he wanted me to summarize or explain to leave Jesse. Didn't we hear that? Like, the first thing out of your mouth. Yes, I'm just illustrating how people can't hear it. Oh, I'm just <laughs> illustrating." how people can spend the entire hour mm -hmm. being explained where we, as we, as the guide said, and as I've said to you, where we had to give him examples of it, what he's doing and he can say yes, but, and, and he can be in it to mm -hmm. go, yes, that's true, Karen. Mm -hmm. So in reality, and then <gasps> sucked right back out. So what's the contract? Mm -hmm. And how very quickly and how permeable it is for him to move that quickly in and out of reality. And that it, that was the point of the session. How quickly that occurs in a split second in his life. And because of that split second of I can pop in and out of realities that quickly, I can, I can shut down and see that my wife needs me here right now. My, our daughter is, you know, she's, we're doing something with her. We're going to play a game tonight. 
oh, I got a text from my my Stephanie, and Stephanie's saying, come over. And geez, she's telling me she's put up the Christmas tree. That sounds funner than... Please stop making this hand gesture. Oh, sorry. That sounds more fun than being with my wife and daughter right now. Maybe I'll have sex. Maybe I'll... Something yeah. better will come of it. It's not... Sex might not come of the one with my daughter. So I'm going to go to my... Sorry. Sorry. The reality at home with his wife... Is more parenting. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't word that right. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a square that says I laughed Karen out loud up. and Karen fucks up? Absolutely. All at the same yeah. time. <laughs> Everyone I think, should be yelling bingo. <laughs> I think those two squares should go side by side. <laughs> but he he gauges it that I can get out of this reality because this is, this is I'll say, somewhat boring to him to be a parent. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to realize now that any time he's with his wife and his daughter's part of it, that he wants to exit that as fast as possible to get to hit, to Stephanie because it means there will be no children there. It means that there are no responsibilities to parent. And that becomes one of the best little parts of our session that actually gets presented to him. And then the guides say, and go to therapy. And it's like, it's not the guide's responsibility to be a Dr. Romani. Mm -hmm. It's not ours. Ours is to present what we can through the channeling and then for him to be able to pick up and go to therapy and say, I know what I'm here to work on. Mm -hmm. I slip in and out and leave reality. When anything with my wife has to do with our child, I vacate. Mm -hmm. I vacate emotionally and mentally and then physically. That's when I run to the affair. Can you help me? Mm -hmm. Can you help me stay present? Can you help me parent? Can you help me partner? That's what I think is what we get to do for people, is help them get to that point. Mm -hmm. And it's presented just like it is for Jesse. This is presented, I want to say like a gift, it, it, and I think it truly is a gift if he can get this. Currently, no. Currently, he doesn't even want to. So the contract currently is for him to leave both. Then when he hears the next part, if I go to therapy, if I do that and I learn that, then could my marriage last? Then is it worth staying for? Mm -hmm. And at that point, the guides are like, we don't want to answer that because you're not even a tenth of the way there. So that's a long shot that you're looking for when your pattern so far is not to do any of the work. So currently you're at a 99% no. And you have to take the 1% to go to therapy and then we'll get back to you. Good. Well, well done. Thank you. I, like, I think it's such a good illustration of what we do versus what therapy does mm -hmm. and that we know the value of the Dr. Romanes mm -hmm. of the world, of these people that are educated and have these different different tools than we do, mm -hmm. where people really do need to find these people instead of saying, therapy doesn't work, or I don't believe in it. Instead of saying, honestly, I like being stuck. Um, I, I like how things are working for me right now. I like verbally abusing people. Mm -hmm. Like people don't speak the truth. They say, I don't believe in therapy mm -hmm. or therapy doesn't work instead of I'm a lazy ass. I'm sabotaging this marriage, honey. I'm getting what I want. Yes. I'm having my affair and you, and I'm s going back and forth into different realities at my own whim. And if you want to stay with me, that's the story. We don't say the truths. Mm -hmm. So instead we say... I don't believe in therapy. And I just think this is a good kick in te people's teeth. And, <laughs> and today just might be one of those days where someone listening to this show and goes, wow, I like how Karen said that. Yeah. It's truly honest. It's like a kick in the teeth. Yeah. And like, it's a kick in the teeth. It's a reality wake up to be able to say, if you're Charlene, 
if oh was that her name? No, Chantel. Chantel. Sorry. Is there another affair? No. Chantel and Stephanie, like there's their wake up call too. Yeah. I think COVID and all of the different um scenarios and how things have had to change and be presented either required that we dig deeper into our belief and into our hold to fall asleep and to tolerate or to have things really presented to us to say, no, this isn't the life that I want. And all three of them are being offered that. At the very end of his session, the very last thing that we discussed, and it was very brief, was the fact that his religion had played a part. I'm not blaming it on the religion, Mm -hmm. but that he needed to look at the beliefs that he, I'll say that, I don't want to say that he just gets taught. He has to accept. He has to be an adult and say, I choose to believe this. Mm -hmm. I choose not to. And at this point, how is this working for me to believe that I can just be forgiven for everything, Mm -hmm. which then allows me to do anything that I want? It's okay for me to hurt people because, you know, I have a belief that that levels that for me. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a lot of opportunity for change. It's a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, good for you. I, I loved his session. Like, you could see him going up and down with things. Certainly, he could even get off the phone and decide he's going to dismiss everything. You and I know that. Mm-hmm. There's always that risk. But the the opportunity to hear it is there mm-hmm. for the truth. I think too, like especially if you're going to see the the session through as a client, you can't unhear it. Mm-hmm. You can forget about it in the sense of I'm going to push it aside, but you can't unhear it. Mm-hmm. I think that's why I love this mm-hmm. because I know they can't, and I know in terms that when we finally do pass over and we go back into being energetic forms again, just in a different way, that we are confronted with the fact that we had the opportunity to know better. Yeah, to be able to say, like, what happened there? Oh, I didn't know. Well, no, she told you so. So what happened there? (laughs) Right? I love that. I know. Accountability is great. Oh, it's my favorite of the universal laws with the universal law of process. You're just going to keep adding? I am. So I'll stop talking So we like the universal laws. (laughs) We do? Okay. (laughs) Thank you for putting together the show today and for holding him accountable. Mm-hmm. My pleasure. Okay. So if you have questions or comments about today's show, you can email us at info at If you have the time today, if you can give us a like, share, subscribe, comment, review, a testimonial if you're feeling ambitious, um, we appreciate all of that as we're trying to get out um, these good lessons across the world. We also welcome you to join us on patreon.com backslash if you're looking to expand your emotional toolkit. Otherwise, have a great Saturday. <laughs>